Ariel Hawani in Brooklyn, New York, alongside Michael Chiesa, who meets Anthony Pettis this Saturday here at the Barclays Center at UFC 223, live on pay-per-view. Is there something on there? A hair. Long hair. One of yours? No. Not one of mine. Too long, dude. This, okay. this is the shortest I think I've had my beard going into a fight. Yeah, why is that? I just cleaned things up a little bit. It was pretty grisly. Uh, it was pretty grisly going through the camp. I don't think I trimmed it once, so... You know, I had to shave the side, get the mullet flowing, get yeah. the beard, get the beard. You look very Brooklyn right now, by the way. You got, you know, like this is uh, all buttoned up. You got the nice beard. I mean, this you would fit in perfectly. But here. I got the Kemp's on. Yeah, so I got the Washington. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. I mean, that that would fly here too. That would, yeah. I think I think people in Brooklyn can appreciate Sean Kemp. Listen, I I want to talk to you about the fight, the return, all that stuff, and more. But honestly, the most important question that I could possibly ask you right now, I, I saw on your Instagram that you met Latrell Sprewell, yes. number eight. New York Knicks, 1999 NBA finalist. Latrell how? Artist. How did? No, know, don't bring that up. How did you meet Latrell, and what was it like to meet Latrell? Well, it was awesome, man. My my good buddy uh, Steve, he works for the he works for the Knicks, and uh, you know he 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 got us some tickets for the for the game, and then uh, he's like, hey, you want to come down and sit behind the bench? I was like, dude, wow. I've always wanted. That's like a bucket list thing for me is to sit on the floor at a Knicks game. And granted, I wasn't in the front, but my feet were on the floor, so I was like. You know, I could check it off the bucket list, but yeah, when the game got over, we got to go walk out on the court, and I just happened to catch him passing by, and I was in awe, man. I mean, Latrell's free will, he's one of the greats, you yeah. know what I mean? So I was a kid in a candy store. I actually had a really nice Knicks outfit I was going to wear today, but I bought it when I was like 205. Oh. So the shoulder seams were like, were like down here, and I was like, yeah, I can't be wearing that. Um, I know he's a big pro wrestling fan. Is he an MMA fan? Um, yeah, actually, uh, when I got introduced to him, uh, they mentioned that I was a UFC fighter, and he got pretty jazzed about it, and he knew about the fight at Barclays Center. Okay, so cool. I told him, hey, it ain't the garden, but I'll take it, man. This, this place is awesome, and I'm excited to be here in New York. Um, also, I'm sure you're excited to be back. It's been quite a while since we saw you. To, to sort of sit on that controversial loss for all this time, what has that been like for you? You know, it was tough for a little bit, but, you know, you just got to get back on the horse and put it behind you and move forward. And, uh, you know, I got a good fight ahead of me. I'm really excited, um, you know, getting to fight a former world champion, guy that's tough. You know, it's uh, I think Anthony could bring out the best in me. And, uh, you know, I'm excited, but I just, you know, no time to cry about it, dude. Just got to put it behind you and, and move forward, and, and that's what I've done. And, and uh, it's been a really good camp. You feel like you're over it. Oh, uh, yeah, I feel like I'm over it. You know, we'll see. I think, I think sooner or later we're going to get to run it back. I think, you know, there's a storyline there, and, you know, uh, I got a lot of time left in the sport, and as does he. He's a young guy, so uh, you know I could see the fight happening again. So there's no point in dwelling on it. Maybe vindicated isn't the right word, but when you saw what Yamasaki did or maybe didn't do in that um, Valentina Shevchenko fight, yeah. what did you think? I t taking my issue with him aside. Yeah. That guy's got to be out of the sport. I mean, that was disgusting. I mean, a referee's job is to protect the fighters first and foremost. It's not to enforce rules. It's not for him to make judgment calls or to let somebody be a warrior or whatever the hell he said. Um, your job is to protect the fighters, and he did not do a good job of that that night. So, you know, who cares about what happened to me? You know, that girl seriously got hurt. She, you know, she got a torn ACL. She got, what, 300 strikes to the head? You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's disgusting. That, that makes me sick to my stomach. So... Um, you know, I, I talked to Mark Ratner uh, at the UFC Performance Institute. It was like, I, I threw a little quip out there about Yamasaki yeah, being here, and he's like, no, we'll never see that guy in the octagon again. So uh, that's, that's good news. So I was just going to ask you if you would, you know, make a request to not have him ref your fights like Brock Lesnar once did with Steve Mazzagatti, but you've been told that he won't be back anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and that's how it actually came up is, uh, I forget, we were talking about somebody making a request about an official. And I was like, oh, hey, by yeah. the way, um, <laughs> can I make a request as well? And they were like, yeah, don't even worry about it. That guy is not going to be anywhere near the Octagon ever again. So it's good news. Interestingly, coming off a loss, yet one could argue this is your most high-profile fight, right, on a really big card against, obviously, a former champion. Do you still feel, though, that he is that same guy, or do you feel like he's on the, the sort of downswing of his career at this point? Anytime I train for an opponent, I'm looking for the, you know, I think it's the best version of him. You know, that's, that's, the, that's what's going to bring out the best in me. People can say what they want about his skid. I know he's over there talking shit. He thinks I'm on social media gassing on him, but, you know, I'm giving him credit where credit's due. The guy's a former world champion, former title contender in two different weight classes, you know. I'm expecting the best Anthony Pettis, and you know, and you best believe you're going to see the best version of me. It's been a phenomenal camp. It's been great preparation, and uh, no better time to fight a guy like this than right now. Now, whose idea was it to have you sit right next to Ally Quinta? I don't know. Some kind I, of cruel joke? No, I love it, dude. We're teammates. People are like, oh, you know, 
former opponents. I'm like, dude, we're, we're, we're former teammates, first and foremost. You know what I mean? We spent three months on the same team training together, and I think the world of the guy. I mean, Al's awesome. You no know, bad blood? I, no bad blood. Okay. Not at all. Not at all. All right. Good. I wanted to make sure of that. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the hair earlier. When did you decide that this was something that you're going to go with? Because this is a bold move on your part. You know, I've had a mullet the better half of my life going all the way back to my childhood, back to my prime when I was like five or six. I had a really nice class picture, you know, the collared shirt out over the sweater, the golden curls. I'm like, you know what, dude, I got to bring it back. I made a lot of good moves back in the day. <laughs> I'm trying to make some good moves now. So, you know, I'm bringing the mullet back. Sooner or later, you know, I think I'm going to have to clean up the look, so they're going to put me behind a broadcasting desk sooner or later, and it's like, uh, I'm going to run with it while I can. You're still pushing for that. I'm not pushing for it as much. It's just going to happen. You know, a, a lot of times I get, I do an interview with, with, with some pretty high-profile guys like Brett Okamoto is pushing for me to get to ESPN. And, uh, you know, I got some people that are pushing for me. And that's not by me being like, hey, man, hook me yeah, up. Yeah, it's yeah. like I do an interview with them, and they're really pleased with my work and the way I speak and my knowledge of the sport. So I know sooner or later it's going to boil down to like, all right, you got the job, bud, but you got to cut it. So and you'll be down? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know. I've had my fun with it, and when I retire, I'll get a mullet down to my butt. I'll get a beard down to my belly button, and you know, whatever. You're like a skinny version of Roy Roy Nelson. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but better grappling. Better grappling and better fighter. Better fighter. If you ask me, yeah. don't tell him I said that. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell him I said that. I think he's a hell of a fighter. He's, he's a, a hell of a he's a black belt, and I'm not. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So there you go. But uh, I, I would say you probably have uh, maybe in the UFC, as far as submissions, you probably have more, right? I would yeah, say, right? I think I have a little more diversity. Diversity, better, okay. That's a better that's, way to say that's, it. That's a nice way to put it. All right, well, it's good to see you back. Good, you well. good luck in this fight. Can't wait for Thank it. You. And, and, and you look great. Thank Don't you, let anyone tell you, you otherwise. You look great as well. Love the shoes. Thank Love you. the outfit. I appreciate it's it. It's always good to see Thank you. Thank you, Mike.